Hi, I'm Kelly Schindler. I'm assistant curator here at the Contemporary Art Museum St. Louis, and I'm the curator of the exhibition Rosa Barba Desert Performed. So Rosa Barba is an, an artist who was born in Sicily in 1972, but she's been based in Berlin and has been living and working in Germany most of her life. And she's become well known uh, for more than 10 years now for her work both in narrative filmmaking as well as um, installation and sculptural objects. And all of her work moves in some way. So the works that you'll see at CAM uh, feature films that ha happen in real time and that occur on a loop so you can watch them over and over again and as well as sculptures in which the film actually feeds through the projector itself and, and events unfold in real time just as they would in a narrative film. In her work, Rosa is very much invested in the materiality of cinema. So using the tools of film from celluloid and the projector to the beam of light running through uh, the projector and the actual installation space or the gallery space in which we actually experience the work, she's interested in using those tools to explore the materiality of film as well as its possibilities. And within her work, uh, Rosa often, um, she takes geographical locations and historical instances as the base for her, her subject matter and then uh, and uses those as jumping off points into fiction and often what she refers to as science fiction. So Rosa's exhibition, which is titled Desert Performed, is her first American solo museum exhibition and it features a number of works that are having their American premiere here at CAM. Uh, the title Desert Performed both refers to the uh, ongoing presence of the desert in her work and its existence as a source of inspiration for her artistically, as well as the performative nature both of the desert as a site where things actually happen and events take place, as well as the performative nature of her artworks themselves. Um, desert Performed is also the title of um, in addition of Rosa's artist book series called Printed Cinema that we will be producing on the occasion of her exhibition. So Cam will be publishing Printed Cinema number 13, Desert Performed, which will explore, um, which will feature um, images and f both still images from films and also photographs that Rosa has taken of the desert throughout her practice and will feature both works that constitute the exhibition here at the museum, but also other works in which she's explored the, um, uh, the desert. So the exhibition is comprised of five artworks, the centerpiece being the, long, the 35 millimeter installation, The Long Road, which is a seven minute film um, of an abandoned racetrack um, that Rosa found in, the, in California's Mojave Desert. And she shoots the racetrack both from the sky from, from a helicopter and then also at ground level. And she explores this sign that she finds in the desert and its, its loop, um, its perfect looping form, um, which is then enacted in the gallery as well as a looping installation. And Rosa is looking at this, this sign that she's found in the landscape and ruminating upon um, what it once stood for, what it has come to be in the sense that it is gradually being absorbed back into the landscape. Um, it, the desert's dusty, the dust is, is slowly and gradually covering the track and kind of enveloping it, it back into itself. Um, and also what this space could possibly mean. And the soundtrack really complements that. There is a, the long road, the title of the work is both inspired by uh, the 1996 poem by Robert Creeley titled The Long Road, which um, is, a, is a meditation on um, the, the spectrum of life itself and what it means to come towards the end of one's own long road, and as well as the actual racetrack that she's, she's located in the landscape. This exhibition features three works that Rosa made um, either in or about California's Mojave Desert, and she made these works in 2007. So the, the future work is The Long Road, which is the 35 millimeter film installation, and then there's this, another film installation called Waiting Grounds, which she also made in 2007. And Waiting Grounds is a 16 millimeter projection. Um, it's a narrative film and that's four minutes long, and it looks at sites that Rosa found in the Mojave, and in this instance, these are 
testing sites that the American military once used for, for training and for, um, for weapons testing, actually. And so this film, which is it's a silent piece in which um, we see images of kind of the evidence of these testing sites that have since also been abandoned, just like the racetrack, but that um, still remain as sort of archaeological artifacts. And so Rose's camera is exploring these different sites. Um, we see part of an RV trailer. We see um, old military cement bunkers that now just exist as sort of um, uh, structures in the landscape. And, inter or, and also interlaced with these images of these testing sites are intertitles, so um, textual cards that Rosa has written from a script, um, which is very science fiction inflected. So it's looking at these different sites that her camera is focusing on and thinking about what these sites could mean. Why is this RV trailer there? Um, it talks about um, looking for the fuse of a time machine. So seeing these structures in the desert as artifacts or as the remains of a past future. So of a, of a time that once anticip anticipated a future that has since passed. So in that sense, this conflation of the past, the present in which the actual film is based, and the future that this past once had looked towards becomes the stuff of science fiction in her work. And in the gallery, the film is projected onto a piece of plexiglass that's suspended from the ceiling of the gallery. And it creates this beautiful, luminous, translucent image that you can view from both sides. So you're, the viewer is, is certainly encouraged to walk around and circumnavigate the piece, therefore becoming an active participant in the work. The piece Western Roundtable, which Rosa also made about the Mojave Desert as part of her, her desert trilogy in 2007, um, is, is one of her projector sculptures. So whereas The Long Road and Waiting Grounds are uh, film projections that take place um, in, in a linear fashion, although they are installed as a loop, uh, Western Roundtable is, is a very different kind of work, although it is also very much engaged in, in the events that took place at one point in the desert, or may not have. Um, the piece in, is comprised of two 16 millimeter projectors that are installed in the corner of the gallery. So they're facing each other and they are projecting clear leader or what is blank film essentially. And so the piece is quite abstract and the soundtrack is, is um, integrated into the actual cellular that's running through the projectors. And the soundtrack is composed of various um, clips and excerpts from different film scores and avant-garde musical compositions over the last century, um, which Rosa has edited together to create a soundtrack that is both somewhat familiar in the sense that some of these um, excerpts actually come from Hollywood cinema, so they're recognizable on the one hand, but at the same time, we don't understand what the soundtrack is actually telling us or what the projectors are talking about. So the title Western Roundtable refers to the 1948 Western Roundtable on Modern Art in which various cultural figures, including artist Marcel Duchamp, uh, architect Frank Lloyd Wright and the composer Arnold Schoenberg, amongst others, including Gregory Bateson, um, all came together to discuss the history and future of modernism. So it was very much this, um, and this is a conversation that took place in San Francisco, um, and it was very much this kind of enclosed, um, exclusive conversation about a very specific uh, topic or subject matter. Um, but then there was allegedly another component of this conversation that took place in the Mojave Desert outside Los Angeles around the same time, but of which no documentation or evidence actually exists among the same participants. Um, so it's a furtive alleged meeting that took place in the desert. And that's the, that's the part that's interesting to Rosa. So her piece in which the two 16 millimeter projectors come to stand in for the, these round table participants um, signifies both the, the myopia of the conversation in the sense that it's exclusive, it's looking inward, it's not privy or accessible to everyone, um, but it's something that actually happened and can be um, imagined in real time. So Rosa's um, sculptural installation is very much her interpretation of a, of a reenactment as an abstract material form. So when we look at this work in the gallery, which 
is happening in real time, it's also happening on a loop as well. Um, we see these projectors as agents or participants speaking to each other, but we are not um, we are not privy to what they might be speaking about, so we can only imagine that. Um, Invisible Act, which is a, a film sculpture from 2010, um, operates in a way similar to Western Roundtable in the sense that it, it, it really um, demonstrates Rosa's interest in the kinetic potential of film um, as a sculptural object. In the piece, um, Rosa has created a sort of circuit um, from a, a standing 60 millimeter projector, um, she creates a path connecting the celluloid coming out of the projector to the gallery wall. So she creates a loop that, that goes from the projector to the wall and back. And on the circuit, she has created a little stand on which a small silver ball is balancing. And the ball is, is literally balancing um, through the motion of the, the film loop itself. So essentially the piece creates this perfect tension between the, the projector as a, as a mechanism, the looping celluloid, and the metal ball. And then when we look at the piece, as we see everything moving in real time, the light from the projection beam shines upon the ball, creating a shadow onto the wall. So what we see is really a shadow play between these various components of projection. Um, and it, it really unfolds as, as almost as puppetry or live theater taking place in real time. So the idea of the invisible act is the sense of both the, the object and the image constituting themselves indefinitely in real time. So it's interesting to think about the idea of Rosa as an Italian artist living in Berlin making all these works about the Mojave Desert in California. And it's also very thrilling for us at CAM to be able to present these works in the United States for the very first time. Essentially, especially as St. Louis is, is the gateway to the West, um, we're very pleased to be able to present these here. Um, the desert has historically been a site of inspiration across various aspects of culture, from um, the spaghetti westerns of Sergio Leone to the various efforts and endeavors of the land art movement, or artists associated with the land art movement in the 1960s and 70s. So on the one hand, you have um, a real cinematic tradition that uses the desert as a site for clandestine activity um, or, or the stuff of science fiction, if we think about a work like David Lynch's Dune, for example, um, or the Mad Max films, of course, come to mind. Um, but as much as the desert is cinematically quite um, photogenic, it also is, is a really rich site for artists to work in as well, or to work with. If we think about the work of Robert Smithson, who made his spiral jetty out um, um, at the Great Salt Lake in the 1960s, um, or think about James Terrell's Red and Crater, or um, Michael Heiser's Double Negative in the, in the I think it's the Nevada Desert. Um, Rosa very much is working in this trajectory of artists, um, exploring different signs and landscapes out um, in the American West. What's different about Rosa's work, though, is that while many of these land artists, um, and I'm using them particularly as they really constitute a specific movement that, that is recognizable to us, um, whereas they were going out into the desert and creating works that, many of which are still there today, if we think about Walter DeMaria's Lightning Field, for example, is you can still go there every summer. Um, and of course, the spiral jetty is, is, is still visible at certain times of the year. Um, while those works very much act as a sort of inscription into the landscape in which artists left their mark, Rosa is excavating the signs and symbols from the desert that she finds there and brings them into the space of cinema. So she takes, so in the long work for, excuse me, in the long road, for example, she takes this racetrack that she finds in the, in the landscape, in the desert, and she shoots it on location as a filmmaker would, and then takes that, that imagery back into the studio and then works with it further. So the desert for Rosa is very much a starting point to be further elaborated on in the space of the studio, and then ultimately in the gallery itself. Um, and I think that's what makes her work so special.